Hello, I'm Steve Matthews and this is the Mask Damp YouTube channel. If you find these videos informative, interesting or entertaining, please consider liking and following. The Mental Health Act has been evolving over many decades. Indeed, the Victorian Lunacy Acts in the 1800s contained recognisable germs of the current Mental Health Act. The Mental Treatment Act 1930 first introduced the idea of treatment for people with mental disorder, while the 1959 Act introduced the concept of the Mental Welfare Officer, whose role provided an independent check on doctors having complete control over the det detention process. The 1983 Act further refined this process of legal protection for people being detained against their will in psychiatric hospitals and the 2007 Act enshrined subsequent changes in human rights legislation into mental health law. The 2022 Draft Mental Health Act will make further changes if it ever reaches the statute books. These acts and accompanying regulations and statutory instruments tend to amend, consolidate or even abolish previous legislation. Sometimes, however, anomalies survived. The smaller islands of the British Isles are a case in point. The Isle of Man, for instance, with a population of around 81,000, has its own Mental Health Act, which still has approved social workers rather than AMPs. And Jersey, in the, mental, in the Channel Islands, has a mental health law going back to 1969. What is almost unknown, however, is the existence of regulations relating to mentally disordered persons in the Farne Islands. This piece of legislation appears to have been forgotten by legislators, with the result that the Farne Islands removal of lunatics to England and Wales regulations 1927 was never repealed. The Farne Islands are a group of small islands off the coast of Northumberland in northern England. They are now owned by the National Trust. Mainly inhabited by a vast range of seabirds including puffins as well as a large colony of seals, in the early part of the century there was still a community of people living permanently on the islands. This small but tight-knitted group, known disparagingly as Fannies by the mainlanders, eked a, precar a precarious living by farming seaweed, milking seals to make seal cheese, and taking eggs and any seabirds they could catch using finely woven nets thrown off the top of the guano-covered cliffs. The Farne Island regulations were created as a result of a notorious incident in 1927 known in the press at the time as the Wellington King. An aristocrat known as the Honourable Petrus Wimple Burgoyne developed the delusion that the Farne Islands were the remains of the lost continent of Atlantis and that as his family originated from Atlantis he was the rightful king. He started to petition King George VI challenging him to the throne of the Farne Islands and demanding that he be invested in Westminster Abbey. He became such a nuisance that he was eventually committed to a lunatic asylum under the Lunacy Act 1890. However, he got wind of this and before the ambulance arrived, he fled to the Northumberland coast where he hired a boat at sea houses and just after dawn on the 1st of April 1927, he reached the Farne Islands. <clears throat> he was able to convince the rather credulous and inbred fannies that he was their rightful king. And in a ceremony involving the smearing of the rather oily seal cheese over his entire upper body, an India rubber Wellington boot 
was forced over his head, crowning him the Wellington King of the Farne Islands. When it was discovered where he was, <clears throat> efforts were immediately commenced to recover him to the mainland. It was at this point that it was realised that there was no legal instrument that could be invoked to lawfully remove him. An emergency session of Parliament was convened, and so was born the Farne Islands Removal of Lunatics to England and Wales Regulations. Within days, a naval frigate sailed to the Farne Islands and a dozen sailors alighted on the island of Inner Farne to apprehend him. Despite the sailors being pelted mercilessly with puffin eggs and foul-smelling lumps of seal cheese by the loyal fannies, the so-called Wellington King was seized and returned to England where he was placed in St Bernard's Hospital in Southall, Middlesex. To this day, the Honourable Petrus Wimple Burgoyne is the only person for whom this regulation has been used. If you have been, thank you for watching.